Iran was attacked this morning. U.S. reports say Israel launched missile strikes against Iran. Explosions were reportedly heard in the central Isfahan province. Iranian state media claims that the country's air defenses shot down three drones near the city of Isfahan. The attack comes after Iran launched hundreds of missiles and drones against Israel last weekend. Tensions have been escalating in West Asia since the Iranian embassy in Syria's capital Damascus was bombed on April 1st. Israel is believed to have been behind that strike. The U.S. Embassy in Israel has told its employees and their families to restrict their movements. The advisory was issued after Israel's, Israel's strikes on Iran. The U.S. asked its employees not to travel outside the greater Tel Aviv, Jerusalem and Beer Shiva areas until further notice. Meanwhile, Australia has asked its citizens in Israel and the Palestinian territories to evacuate if possible. The government advisory cited a high threat of military reprisals and terrorist attacks. The Australian government added that potential attacks may result in airspace closures, flight cancellations and travel disruptions. The U.S. has voted against Palestine's request for full membership at the United Nations. The request was tabled at the U.N. Security Council. The draft resolution received 12 votes in favour, two abstentions from the U.K. and Switzerland, and one vote of opposition by the U.S. The U.S. has, veto power, uh, has the power to veto any resolution, which is what happened. After the vote, the U.S. said that there was no path to Palestinian statehood other than through negotiations between the Israelis and the Palestinians. In the U.S., police have arrested several pro-Palestinian protesters at Columbia University. Nearly 108 students who were demonstrating at the campus lawn were taken into custody. This was after Columbia University's president authorized the police to clear the encampment set up by the protesting students. Meanwhile, in Argentina, hundreds of people protested in the capital, Buenos Aires. They called on President Javier Millet's administration to withdraw its support for Israel and break off diplomatic relations. Demonstrators carrying Palestinian flags and banners also called for a ceasefire in Gaza. Argentinian President Javier Millet has been outspoken in his support for Israel. In February, he visited Jerusalem and met with Israel's President Isaac Herzog. In India, voting for the country's general elections has begun. Voting for phase one of the Lok Sabha or lower house elections is taking place today. In this first phase, 102 out of 543 parliamentary seats are on the ballot. The general elections will be held in seven phases. Voting begins today and will last till the 1st of June. The results will be announced on June 4th. In Pakistan, a vehicle carrying five Japanese nationals was targeted in a suicide bombing attack. The attack took place in the city of Karachi. All five foreigners survived the attack. Meanwhile, the suicide bomber and another militant were killed by the Pakistani police. China's top diplomat, Wang Yi, met Indonesian President Joko Widodo yesterday. This was during his two-day visit to the Southeast Asian nation. Wang Yi also met Widodo's successor, Prabowo Subianto, during the visit. Earlier this month, Indonesia's president-elect, Prabowo, had visited China. He had met Chinese President Xi Jinping during that trip. Kenya's military chief and nine other senior military officials have died in a helicopter crash. The helicopter they were traveling in crashed right after takeoff in a remote part of the country. Kenya's president, William Bruto, has confirmed the defense chief's demise. Bruto added that the Kenyan Air Force is investigating the cause of the crash. A juror was excused from a former U.S. President Donald Trump's hush money trial yesterday. She said she felt intimidated because her identity was partially made public. The juror told the court that her family, friends and colleagues had contacted her. This was after they deduced through media accounts that she was on the jury. 
North Korea has released a new song praising their leader, Kim Jong-un. It praises Kim for being a friendly father and great leader. The music video for the song was aired on state-controlled Korean Central Television. A live performance of the song, which was watched by Kim Jong-un himself, was also broadcast. In climate news, continuous downpours in Iran of rain have triggered flash floods in the region. The raging flood water has submerged streets and bridges. Rescuers were seen helping stranded people via boat. According to Iranian authorities, the rain has displaced thousands of people. In the Pakistani province of Balochistan, 13 people have died so far due to lightning and flooding. The region is bracing for more rains amid ongoing rescue and relief operations. Balochistan is witnessing the highest, uh, its highest downpour in decades. According to authorities, the total rain death toll has now crossed 75 in Pakistan. A new study has found that major Chinese cities are suffering moderate to severe levels of subsidence. It refers to the gradual sinking of land due to the movements underneath the Earth's surface. The study says that approximately 45% of China's urban land is sinking at a rate of 3 mm per year. The sinking is attributed to water scarcity. A wildfire raging in central Mexico has destroyed over 800 hectares of land. Firefighters have managed to contain about 65% of the fire, but they say strong winds are making it difficult for them to douse the flames. The West African nation of Mali is battling a deadly heat wave. Some regions are recording temperatures as high as 45 degrees Celsius. A study has attributed this heat wave to climate change. Scientists have dis uh, described the heat wave as a once in a 200 year phenomenon. Uh, in addition, Mali is also suffering from an electricity crisis that began last year. The Ecuadorian government has declared uh, the suspension of the working day from April 18th, uh, for April 18th and 19th. This comes after its hydroelectric power plant stopped functioning. Due to a severe drought, water levels have reached uh, below operational points at the hydroelectric power plants. Along with this, people are also experiencing a power cut of eight hours every day. Activists from the organization Greenpeace staged a protest in Chile. This was against the expansion of the Los Bron uh, Bronces mine in the Andes Mountains. The activists in uh, red knickers uh, chained themselves to a bridge. The activists argue that mining projects threaten the water reserves stored in uh, Andean glaciers. A group of 160 financial firms across the world have proposed a treaty to end plastic pollution. They're urging their governments to set an objective for all public and private firms to be consistent with the goal of eliminating plastic pollution. This comes ahead of the Intergovernmental Negotiation, uh, Negotiating Committee uh, meeting on plastic pollution in Canada. On to business and tech news. Crude oil prices surged by nearly $3 per barrel today. This was uh, after Israel conducted its strikes on Iran. Uh, the global oil price benchmark, Brent, is trading at near $89 per barrel. Rising tensions in West Asia have sparked investor concerns about disruptions in oil supplies. Meanwhile, stock markets in Asia declined after the Israeli strike on Iran. Japan's stock market index, the Nikkei 225, slipped by over 3%, while Hong Kong's Hang Seng dropped by 2%. China's Shanghai Composite fell by around 0.4%. Meanwhile, the cryptocurrency market also reacted to the escalating crisis in West Asia. Bitcoin's value dropped by as much as 6%, sinking below the $60,000 mark. Streaming giant Netflix will stop posting its subscription numbers, oh, like in the future.
the uh, firm has asked its investors to focus on its uh, revenue rather than the number of subscribers. Netflix had uh, nearly 270 million subscribers globally by the end of March 2024. U.S. investment firm Apollo Global is reportedly in talks with Japan's Sony Group. Firms are planning to bid together for American film and TV production firm Paramount Global that's been struggling with financial losses in its streaming business. The firm is currently in acquisition talks with the American production company Skydance Media. Johnson & Johnson won a case against, uh, has won a case against, that was uh, put against its baby powder. A U.S. court said that the product was not linked to the death of a woman due to ovarian cancer. The lawsuit was brought by the family of the woman who died of ovarian cancer. The family claimed that she used Johnson's baby powder daily for decades. They said the usage of the powder led to her cancer. Tech giant Google has terminated 28 employees in the U.S. This is after the employees staged a sit-in protest at its office earlier this week. They were demanding that the firm end its services to the Israeli government. Google said that employ the employees were fired for disrupting others' work and blocking access to Google facilities. Meanwhile, Google is merging its artificial intelligence units, responsible AI and DeepMind. The move aims to boost collaboration between the two teams amid rising competition in the AI sector. DeepMind works on advanced AI chatbots like Gemini, while Responsible AI is developing AI models that are safer for the community. Tech giant Microsoft could reportedly face a probe in the European Union. This is over the firm's investment in ChatGPT maker OpenAI. Microsoft has invested over $13 billion in OpenAI. EU regulators are examining whether this investment in any way restricts competition in the European market. Meta has unveiled new versions of its artificial intelligence model called the large language model Meta AI 3. The firm claims that it is the most advanced AI model com uh, com when compared to its peers. It will be combined with Meta's virtual AI assistant that's available on uh, social media platforms. Social media platforms WhatsApp and Threads have been removed from Apple's App Store in China. Apple said it had to remove the apps after an order by the Chinese government. The order cited national security concerns. Apple has said that it's obliged to follow uh, China's laws even if it disagrees with them. Moving to sports, we start with cricket and the Indian Premier League. Mumbai Indians beat Punjab Super Kings by nine runs at their home ground. Mumbai put up 192 runs in the first innings. Surya Kumar Yadav topped the scoring for Mumbai with his 78 of 53 balls. Punjab's chase started with multiple blunders. They lost four crucial wickets early in the game and scored just 17 runs. But they made a decent recovery and ended with 183. However, this wasn't enough to beat the Mumbai Indians. A T20 international series between Pakistan and New Zealand has begun. But the first match in Rawalpindi was washed out. The rain played spoil sport and the two sides had to settle for a draw yesterday. New Zealand played only two balls in their innings, but Shaheen Shah Afridi still removed Tim Robinson for a duck. The five-match series serves as a warm-up ahead of this year's T20 World Cup. In football, Liverpool's Europa League dreams are over. The Reds were defeated 3-1 on aggregate by Italian side Atalanta. Liverpool scored the only goal, goal in last night's match. This was through Mohamed Salah. But it wasn't enough to overturn the first leg deficit. Atalanta had earlier beaten Liverpool 3-0 at Anfield. Meanwhile, the newly crowned Bundesliga champions Bayer Leverkusen have reached the Europa League semis. The German side played a one-all draw against England's West Ham. Mikhail Antonio scored the opener for West Ham, but Leverkusen's uh, Jeremy Frimpong scored a late equaliser. With the draw, Leverkusen won the tie 3-1 on aggregate. 
In tennis, the women's world number one, Iga Świątek, advanced to the quarterfinals of the Stuttgart Open. The Polish powerhouse downed Belgium's Elise Mertens 6-3, 6-4 in straight sets. Świątek's next opponent is the 2021 US Open champion, Emma Raducanu. Also through to the Stuttgart Open quarterfinals is women's world number four, Elena Rybakina. The Kazakh player brushed aside Russia's Veronika Kudermetova 7-6-1-6-6-4 in a hard-fought match. Rybakina will next take on Italy's Jasmine Paolini in the quarters. The full schedule uh, for the Davis Cup Finals group stage have been announced. Italy will begin their title defence against Brazil on September 11th. They'll also play against the Netherlands and Belgium in Group A. Meanwhile, the US, who are the 32-time champions of the Davis Cup, will start their campaign against Chile. In badminton, former men's world number one, Kento Momoa has announced his retirement at the age of just 29. Back in 2020, he underwent a major eye surgery after a horrific car crash. Momoa has struggled to return to form since the incident. He will now only play in domestic competitions and won't represent Japan on badminton tours. In athletics, Indian long jumper Murli Sri Shankar has ruled himself out of the entire 2024 season. He sustained an injury during practice and will need a knee surgery. This also means he will not be able to participate in the Paris Olympics. Sri Shankar announced the sad news on social media. In Formula One, the Chinese Grand Prix practice session in Shanghai was interrupted by a minor fire. A patch of grass was set ablaze near Turn 7 of the Shanghai Interna International Circuit. Race officials threw up the red flag and cars returned to the pit lane. At the time of the incident, Red Bull's Max Verstappen was leading the race. In entertainment news, Taylor Swift's most awaited album, The Tortured Poets Department, has released. It has 16 songs and 4 bonus tracks. Swift has added uh, Florence Plus the Machine and Post Malone as co-writers uh, in her album. According to reports, the album's title might be related to her former boyfriend, Joe Alwyn. Even before its release, it became the most pre-saved album on Spotify. According to a bank in the UK, Taylor Swift fans have been scammed over Eras Tour tickets. The bank issued an urgent warning after fake Facebook pages started selling tickets. People lost at least $1.2 million due to the fake advertisements. Taylor Swift will be performing in the UK this summer. According to the to reports, rapper Ye, formerly known as Kanye West, has been named as a suspect in a battery case in Los Angeles. He's been accused of punching a man who grabbed his wife Bianca in April. However, the rapper's team denies all the claims. They stated that no police report was filed, so there is no suspect and no investigation. Canadian singer and rapper A.P. Dhillon will not be performing in the second, uh, at the second weekend of Coachella 2024. The festival announced his departure, citing scheduling problems. Dhillon received heavy backlash after he broke his guitar on stage during, uh, during the performance last weekend. The upcoming docu-series Thank You, Good Night, The Bon Jovi Story premiered in London yesterday. The series is about the musician John Bon Jovi and his 40-year-long career. It will also showcase the vulnerable moments of the musician's life. The docu-series will start streaming online from the 26th of April. The post-apocalyptic drama series Fallout has been renewed for a second season. The creators of the show said, We can't wait to blow up the world all over again. The story follows the aftermath of an apocalyptic nuclear exchange. The series is based on a video game with the same name. Paramount has released the trailer of Transformers 1. The animated prequel will take a closer look at the characters of Optimus Prime and Megatron. The trailer shows them as they were uh, 
as mere worker bots before becoming powerful and unique. Actors Chris Hemsworth and Brian uh, Tyree uh, Henry have lent their voices to the film. The nominees for the upcoming Daytime Emmy Awards 2024 have been announced. Shows like General Hospital, The Bay and Days of Our Lives have been nominated in the drama series category. Actors John McCook, uh, Eric uh, Martzolf and uh, Scott Clifton are competing for the Lead Performance Actor Award. Actors uh, Tamara Braun, uh, Michelle Stafford and Cynthia Watros are in the race for Lead Performance Actress Award. Uh, the 2024 Daytime Emmy Awards will take place in June. The Cannes Film Festival will be felicitating Studio Ghibli with the Honorary Palm d'Or Award. The Japanese studio is known for its iconic animation work in projects like My Neighbor Totoro and Spirited Away. So far, this award has been given to Tom Cruise, Michael Douglas and Harrison Ford. A musical uh, titled Suffs opened at New York's Broadway Theatre on Thursday. People such as Hillary Clinton and Malala Yousafzai are behind its production. The musical is set in the US and revolves around the women's fight for equality, especially their right to vote. From impeachments to inaugurations, if it's a political story, we are on the scene. The race for the White House is heating up. We're beating Biden. How dare he say that? If it's breaking news, we're live with the latest coverage. From the White House, the State Department, and Capitol Hill, we know the issue, but above all, we know the players to bring you the latest in-depth analysis on all the key stories that we're covering. I'm Eric Ham. Join me from Washington here on First Post America.